Hello, and welcome to your field study. Before we get started on your grade specific and Georgia specific field study, we're going to take a look at monuments and architecture around the world. There are numerous monuments around the world that we recognize, and I'm going to pull four of them that you probably recognize with specific locations. But before we get started, let's talk for a moment. Around the world, there are many big monuments. They might be sculptures or they might be architecture. And there are many reasons why people make this art and why these pieces of art are located outside. Take a moment and think about those. Think about why do you think we put some artwork outside? Why do you think we have artwork where people can see it the most? Now let's look at some of America's big monuments, including America's most famous statue, the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty was dedicated in New York City in October 28th 1886. It was designed by Frederick August Bartoli, but it was created by Gustav Eiffel. And yes, you recognize that name, I'm sure. The statue itself is 151 feet and 1 inches tall, or about 46 meters. But from the base, the foundation of the pedestal, all the way to the tip, it doubles it goes up to 305 feet in one inch, or 93 meters. The Statue of Liberty is arguably one of the most recognizable American icons. Most people around the world, even if they don't know where America's uh, capital is, they'll recognize the Statue of Liberty. Next, we have the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France, another landmark famous location. The Eiffel Tower was constructed for two years from 1887 to 1889 to be the entrance to the World's Fair in Paris. It was named after the engineer Gustave Eiffel, whose team designed and built it. It is 1,063 feet tall, or 324 meters tall, which makes it about the same size, a little bit more than an 80-story building, and is the tallest structure in Paris. Again, this is a very famous landmark or icon. Most people would recognize this as being a French thing, and you, they, would tell, they would be able to tell you that it is located in Paris even if they might not know that Paris is the capital of France. Next, we have the Great Sphinx in Giza, Egypt. The Great Sphinx. While it is impossible to know who built the Sphinx because of its age, it is generally believed to represent the Pharaoh Khafre. It is believed to be 4,500 years old. It measures 240 feet long from the back to the front and then 66 feet tall from the top of the head down to the bottom. And you can see in some of these pictures, especially if we go back one, it is located near the pyramids and then I wanted to put these pictures in here so you could see how close the pyramids are to a city. Now we have the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, California. Construction started in 1933 and it ended in 1937. Before that, there had been a ferry service, which means that there was a boat that would carry people across the bay. It was headed by a man named Joseph Strauss. The height is 246 feet tall at its biggest, and while the whole bridge is 1.7 miles, there is only 0.79 miles over the water, 
which means there's still more land around it that's considered part of the Golden Gate Bridge. So now, my kindergarten and first grade friends, we're going to look at some of Georgia's public artwork. We have a lot in Georgia, monuments, statues, murals, and more, but we're going to focus on two types of artwork. One of them is called the Atlanta Tiny Doors Project. This, and you can see there's one right there, it's even called Tinies. This is a project. It is headed by a group of artists who started in 2014 and are still going. They create tiny doors that are seven inches high and located throughout Atlanta. The doors reflect the style of the neighborhood that they are located in. Like you can see, the aquarium door on the bottom right. You can see one of the manor houses in a tree and you can see just a small door located on the other, in our other um, picture there. There are 18 official doors, and if you visit the website, you can find a map to them, but there are many others scattered throughout Atlanta. The 18 official ones were created by the actual artists, but they have inspired others to create different types of doors. Next, we're going to look at the Atlanta Playground. This is located in Woodruff Park. It was built in 2012 as a service to the children of Atlanta. Different parts of the letters have different playground equipment on it. There is a slide in the letter L, monkey bars in the letter T, and climbing board along the letter A. So, what you're going to be doing for your STEM journal, pick out a new page for your My Study, My Field Study notes and write the date. Pick one of the two options for your exercise today and then you may write or create artwork about the one that you choose. You may either create a tiny door for your neighborhood, what kind of landmark, places that are important near your house could you use for your inspiration? What kind of colors would be in your neighborhood? Is there anything famous nearby? Or you can create a playground based on letters. Use any three letters and create a playground with those letters like the ATL playground. Tell or show us what letter will make what kind of playground piece. That's your field study for today. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much.